are wrapping it up today with an extra special Bible lesson. I cannot wait for y'all to see it in just a minute. But before we go to that, I have a few things for you. So next weekend, June 4th and 5th is Move Up Weekend. I am pumped to see some kindergartners in my area. And I am so sad and crying that my third graders are leaving me. Lots of emotions going on here, but should be sure to follow our Instagram and our Facebook for all the information you need to know. And if you have any questions, just give us a call. We're here, here to help you all the time. So, the next big news, BBS. We are getting so close and merch starts selling soon. So be on the watch out for that. Another reason to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. You get the hottest and latest info on that. So I'm pumped for some merch. I love merch. Give me all the merch. All right, so it's Memorial Day weekend, kicking off summer. <clears throat> but before we really dive into summer, we are going to head on over to Nancy with a Bible lesson. And today we are going to learn a little bit about what it looks like to keep going. And we know we get to keep going because of what Jesus did for us. I had so much fun rock climbing last week. I'm gonna head on out, but have fun watching the rest of HRK at home. Bye guys. Hey guys, welcome back to week five. This week our Bible lesson is about resilience and we learned in Hebrews 12 that all of the people in the Bible have gone before us, faced hard facts and been resilient into what God wants for them and resilient and to get through what God has planned out for them. So just remember, when you're going around, giving it your all, playing on the playground, if you get knocked down and you should fall, oh, get back up again. Get back up again. That's right. Because don't forget, Jesus paid the ultimate price when he died on the cross for us to forgive us for our sins. So watch the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Inspired by the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, Verses 1 through 3. Allie shoved her swimsuit into the bag along with the towel. Where are my goggles? Mom was trying to hold Allie's younger brother, Jack, as she wrestled shoes onto his feet. Check the laundry room. You dumped your swim bag there. Dumped your swim bag there. Dumped your swim bag there. I get it already. Allie. I know, I know, Mom. It's just what Jack does. Dumped your swim bag there. Allie bit her lip to keep from snapping back and ran to the laundry room. It was her biggest swim meet of the season, but Dad was on a business trip and Mom had snagged some big appointment for Jack with some new doctor. Grandpa will be here in two minutes to pick you up. I'm putting Jack in the car. Good luck with that. Allie snagged her goggles and threw them in her bag. Of course Jack was melting down again. This new doctor's appointment wasn't part of his regular routine. No one cares about my routine. Allie lugged her swim bag out the door to see Grandpa's beat-up Jeep behind Mom's minivan. Mom was trying to strap Jack into a seat, but he was flailing and flapping his hands. Rex Rex! Rex Rex! Rex Rex! Rex Rex! Rex Rex was one of Jack's gazillion toy dinosaurs. He spent hours lining them up and he could recite all of their names, Pterodactyl, Ichthyosaurus, and yet he couldn't manage a simple hello. Allie, could you run back in and grab Rex Rex? Uh, no, wait, I'll do it. I I've got to lock the door. Mom flew past Allie on her way back in and planted a kiss on her cheek. You'll do great at the meet, sweetie. I love you. Allie waved goodbye to Jack as she passed the van, but he wasn't paying attention. Sighing, she hopped into the Jeep beside Grandpa. Hi, Papa. Hi, angelfish. All ready to swim? I guess. Allie's mom tore out of the house, carrying Rex Rex, rawr, and made a beeline for the minivan, calling out to Grandpa and Allie. Thanks so much for doing this. It all happened last minute. Grandpa and Allie waved goodbye, and the Jeep backed out. 
You doing okay? Yeah. Who's this fancy doctor? I don't know. He's some autism expert, and there's usually like a six-month wait to see him, but Mom got a call an hour ago to come. Well, that's good for Jack, right? Is it? I mean, he's already going to speech therapy and occupational therapy and plane therapy, and I thought he was supposed to get better or something, but they did that big evaluation thing last month, and now Mom says Jack has autism. And it doesn't get better. It's just the way you are. Well, that sure is a lot to think about. Hmm, you, you do some good thinking while you swim, right? I guess, but half the time Mom has to pull me out of swim practice so we can get to one of Jack's therapy sessions. And she's already said if I swim this summer, I'm going to have to miss a bunch. Sometimes I just... I want my brother to be different. That's awful. I'm an awful person. No, Angelfish. You, you've been running a tough race. I hate running. All right, swimming. You, you've been swimming really hard, and you just found out there's no finish line. You're not really talking about swimming, are you? I always said you were the brightest fish in the barrel. <laughs> Papa. I know. It feels like your parents spend all their time and attention on Jack. I... I guess we all hoped that could change, but now it looks like change is going to be more of a 10,000 meter swim instead of a 50 meter sprint. Allie sighed and glanced up at the sparkling blue pool as they pulled into the parking lot of the Y. I'm just tired of it. I want a brother who likes to be hugged and play games and doesn't draw attention when he comes to my swim meets. It would be easier to quit swimming. They both stared at the neatly marked lanes in the pool. You got a minute before you need to be out there? Yeah, I think. What you're facing isn't fair, but everyone's story is different. Everyone has their own 10,000 meter swim, and there's only one way to stick it out. Extra practice? Well, that helps for sure, but I'm thinking about the Jesus kind. Can I read you a couple of verses? You're going to anyway. Grandpa tapped on his phone. Aha, Hebrews chapter 12. Let us keep on running the race marked out for us. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith, and he is the one who completes it. He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there because of the joy he was looking forward to. Then he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He made it through these attacks by sinners, so think about him. You won't get tired. You won't lose hope. Hmm. I never thought about all that stuff Jesus went through, like running a hard race. You think he swam too? Didn't need to, because he could walk on water. <laughs> Jesus paved the way for us. Even when we're tired and we messed up, and we know we can get back up and keep going because we're loved and forgiven no matter what. I love swimming. I really don't want to stop. Good. Let's get you in that pool, angelfish. Allie smiled and hopped out of the Jeep. She found she felt a little bit lighter. Light enough to swim extra hard. Light enough to finish her final swim of the afternoon with a personal record. Amazing swim, Allie. Swim alley, swim alley, swim alley. Allie wiped water from her eyes to see Jack and Mom cheering near the gate. Jack wore noise-canceling headphones and cheered and jumped up and down, wildly flapping his hands. She noticed that he was looking right at her. <laughs> swim alley, swim alley. Allie smiled and flapped her hand right back at him. <sighs> they had a long journey ahead, but you know, Allie was ready to keep going.